Hi there, Joshua Hamlin here, and today I'm in beautiful South Africa in Kruger National Park. I'm inside one of the camps in the park right now, and we've just finished up a few fantastic days of a self-driving safari around the southern part of Kruger National Park and seen a ton of incredible animals. If you want to see some of the wildlife that we spotted, we'll have a link to a video in the description below where you can see a bunch of those amazing animals that we spotted as we drove around the park. Today though, I wanted to share some of our tips that we've learned over the last few days as we've planned this trip and then kind of had some days to spend in the park. We're heading out today uh, back to Johannesburg. So a few different things, uh, as you're planning the trip, sometimes the, the various lodges and bungalows and places to stay can get booked out pretty far in advance. So if you have some dates in mind, I would say book that as soon as you can because things can start to fill up. Kruger is a very popular spot for tourists here in South Africa. Uh, we also have a video on the channel that we'll link to in the description on our three bed bungalow that you can check that out if you are wondering kind of what some of those look like. We stayed in the Skakuza camp, which is the largest of all of the about 12 camps that are in Kruger National Park. Uh, there are a few other camps that have uh, restaurants and are fairly large as well, but Skakuza is the biggest and kind of has the most facilities. There's even a golf course there as well. We did not try that out, but there's quite a lot going on there. So that's a great place to stay. We also visited uh, Satera and Lower Sebi. Those are two other camps that are about a couple hours away from Skakuza. And those are both also great uh, with good restaurants and facilities there as well. So you can kind of decide based on uh, looking at the map and, and what you want to do there. We actually, speaking of maps and guides, we use this. This is the Kruger Park map and guide. This is the third edition, so it was actually just published in September of 2023. So it was right before we, we did our safari. This is from Tinkers. Uh, we found this to be super helpful. We picked this up just in one of the shops in the park, but you can also, I think, buy it online. So it has some really good info. Uh, about some of the animals and things and game drives time times to go out and see animals but the thing that's most helpful is the maps here and so here's Kukuza this is where I was saying we stayed here's Lower Sebi and Satera is just uh, just up here kind of a little further north you can see examples of some of the animals and things on different uh, parts of the park but uh, this was really helpful because uh, there's a lot of good recommendations in here for the drives to the, the game drives to do and so they'll show if i flip to uh, some of these specific spots here so here's like the specific game drives around skakuza you can see these different routes and whether uh, you know morning drive afternoon drive that type of thing so even the best times of day to go and then uh, the people who have written this have a lot of experience in the park and so they'll say you know here's the things we've seen there in the past so uh, this book was very helpful. I would definitely recommend either buying it online or just picking it up once you get to the park here. And if you're doing the self-driving safari, then, then you'll find it super helpful. In addition to the self-driving safari, though, you can also book some experiences. So we booked a morning walk. So that's where they drive you out a little ways, and then you actually get to get out of your vehicle and walk through uh, the, the park here, which is pretty incredible because normally <clears throat> you're never allowed to get out of your car and you never should for safety purposes, but you go with a couple guides that have rifles with them and so uh, they're able to protect you if anything happens. But being on foot when you know elephants come through the trees and things like that is, is a really amazing experience. So we booked that morning walk and then we also booked a night drive because the, the camps close usually at around 6 p.m. and then you're not allowed to come or go after that. But with a night drive, they take you out well after dark. It was like 8 to 10 p.m. And you're able to just use uh, flashlights and see what you can spot. We saw lions, hippos that come out of the water at night to eat as well. So we saw quite a few really neat things on that night drive. Both of those experiences I would definitely recommend booking. You can do that when you book your lodging through the, the South African National Park uh, website. You can book all of that at the same time. You can also pay the uh, like conservation fees online so that way when you arrive here everything is set. There are some other experiences as well like uh, sunset, sunrise drives. You can go out for a, a braai uh, where you kind of do a a game drive and then eat a meal together as well. So there are a few different things that you can you can book ahead of time. Those are definitely worth doing even if you are primarily doing the self-driving safari like we did. <clears throat> and speaking of self-driving safaris, we were a little hesitant coming into this because we weren't sure, you know, would how would that work? Would you be able to see things? But I can tell you that you will see a tremendous amount even if you're just driving yourself around in a rented vehicle like we did. We saw 
untold numbers of elephants, giraffes, uh, impala are everywhere. And then even the rarer things like uh, cheetahs and leopards and uh, hippos, uh, lots, lots of hippos in the water, those are super fun to watch. So just uh, a ton of really uh, incredible experiences there. So even if you're self-driving, especially if you get a, a little bit of a guidebook that can help you out, I think it's, it's still a great experience. You don't have to worry about coming out and not seeing anything, but obviously experiences, you know, can be different for every person. I will say on individual days during our stay here, there were t time periods where we might go an hour or two hours with seeing very little or maybe just impalas or things we'd already seen a lot of. So uh, you, you gotta make sure you don't get discouraged when you're coming through the park. And uh, you know, if, if you have a couple hours without seeing much, you can then see some really cool stuff later in the day. So uh, as you're driving around, things can change a lot. One tip for, for spotting animals, uh, a couple things. Number one is drive slow. Uh, if, if you drive slower, it's just easier uh, to kind of look around you. So, so that helps in spotting more things. The other thing is if you are in your own vehicle and then you see a, a lot of other kind of uh, safari vehicles from the different safari companies here, if they're all kind of going pretty fast in one direction, that usually means that one of them has reported in like a sighting of something rare and they're all going out there to see that. So if it's pretty clear that a, like several of them are passing you, not looking around for, for game like they normally would, but are going to a specific place, then you're probably a good bet to, to just follow them and, you, and you'll end up somewhere cool. So we did that one day and saw uh, a cheetah kill uh, with a, a cheetah that had uh, was eating an impala and then also some lions that had killed a giraffe and were eating the giraffe as well. So those kills are a really unique thing to, to see out here. And certainly uh, as fun as it is to, to see all the, the animals uh, walking around and everything, uh, they still have to eat. So that's part of the experience out here in Kruger National Park. So that's a few of our uh, kind of tips on, on based on our experience. Um, like I said, you can find those couple other videos to see more of our lodging and some of the animals we saw in the description below. Definitely when you're here, uh, go out and, you know, just have fun checking out the camps and, and seeing all of the animals. Keep in mind that uh, some of the camps don't all have restaurants and things, so you'll want to look into that if you're planning to stop at a camp throughout the day to eat. There are other places you can stop as well, so they're called them uh, picnic sites which have little cafes and shops typically, so you can stop at those. There's also the uh, bird blinds and uh, bird hides uh, that they call them, and so these are spots you can get out, and usually it's like a a covered structure and you can, uh, it's at a, a, watery, a watery area and so you're looking for birds. There's also, can be hippos there a lot. The one right by Skakuza that's like a 10 minute drive from the gate has some great uh, hippos and, and birds that are almost always present there. So those are other opportunities when you're driving between camps and kind of driving throughout the day for you to get out and stretch your legs a bit since you should never be exiting the vehicle uh, if you're just kind of out uh, in the park because that can be extremely dangerous. So I hope these tips were, were helpful. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any other questions about our experience and we'll do our best to answer your questions if you're planning a trip to Kruger National Park. Thanks for watching.